This is Miss Pat. Miss Pat has a diagnosis of torticollis and it was from a whiplash injury. Another term for torticollis is Rynac uh, and it's very appropriate because these patients really do their necks writhe. Um, torticollis injury can be forward, it can be left, right, it can be that wry neck, it could also be hyperextending. It's a deformity of the neck that is wrecked with this neurological tone. And hers was from a whiplash injury. And uh, we knew it was just tone because, and no shortened tissue because she would said uh, when I talked to her originally that if she would lie down, like in the morning when she woke up, she would be totally at rest and relaxed. When she sat up, her neck would go sideways. But when she stood up, her neck would get that wry neck or that twisting with that tone. And she, when she was telling me about the accident where she got the whiplash injury, um, basically it was her vehicle against an 18-wheeler truck and the 18-wheeler won. And she talked about a guardrail beside the road and from there it was straight down uh, into a, a deep ravine so it was very frightening for her and she said the truck just she said w was coming and coming and coming and the more she would say that her neck would just do this horrible horrible twist so anxiety definitely had an effect on it with miss bessie now this this is the kentucky collar and they used to all be uh, custom made. Now we have sizes from the smallest infant, we even have a size we call doll, um, all the way up to the largest and tallest men. Um, but what I explained to Miss Bessie was, excuse me, Miss Pat, that what I hoped would occur would be that her tone would be relaxed, but I couldn't guarantee her. Uh, and I'm always timing uh, because it's very fascinating to see when the relaxation of tone occurs and how much. It can be very dramatic or it can be kind of insidious that you literally have to feel the joint. Um, but I had great hopes for Miss Pat because of oh, we knew there was no shortened tissue. So I'm thinking, you know, will it be 15 minutes, 14, 16? So I'm timing and uh, she's a very sweet lady and she was just talking and talking and her neck is down. So at 10 minutes, she says, I feel funny. And I'd never heard a patient say that before. So I was um, immediately, I said, uh, are you all right? And she said, no, it just felt funny. And within, I couldn't tell you how long, just a minute or so, her tone released and she went from this up. And it's just so amazing. And it, it, like I said, it's exciting uh, when, when tone is that uh, visual. And her feeling funny was a neurological release where she was her body was preparing to allow her to go back to normal alignment. Now, if you'll remember, um, we said when she stood was when she her tone kicked in the worst. So I took the collar off of her. She remained at neutral, and then I had her stand up, and she still remained at neutral. So theoretically, each time she has this contracture, this neurological tone, if she puts the Kentucky collar on and allows it 15 minutes, whatever, to work through the tone to reach relaxation, then she should have no shortened tissue. It should continually relax her. You always have to factor in patient compliance. Uh, will they continue to do this? So patient teaching is vital and explain to them in their terms where they can understand about neurological tone and how if they don't continually relax the tone and they're held in that tight muscle contraction when the muscle is held tight in a contraction, then that's when it will shorten over a period of time, some quicker than others. We must continue, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we must consider when we're dealing with necks and with the spine, do we treat just the neck? Are there issues below the neck in the spine that we need to address also? 
with Miss Pat. Hers was whiplash injury, and we caught it when it was just neck, so it was very appropriate and very efficient to simply treat the neck. But then this lady uh, had had a stroke. Now, she'd had a stroke previously, and she was able to live in a small efficiency apartment on her own. Uh, she had a, a walker with rollers, but she could take care of her needs during the day. Now she had another stroke and she had to go through the hospital. Then she came out of the hospital, was in a skilled nursing facility. And at the end of her Part A stay, her, her Medicare Part A days for rehab, um, she was told that she wouldn't be able to go home, that she would have to live in a long-term care facility. Now the goal was for her to go home and live in the home with her daughter, but her daughter worked during the day. So that meant mom would have to be independent during the day and safe. And because of her severe contractures, uh, her spinal curvatures from the neck on down, uh, it was very evident that her center of gravity was off enough that she uh, was very much a candidate for potential falls and just would not be able to take care of herself. The first uh, picture is taken after she was fit with the vertebrae's TLSO, that is T is thoracic, then lumbar, sacral, then orthosis. So it's TLSO. It did a good job of compressing her spine, of holding in her abdominal contents, these patients typically do not have muscle tone in their abdominal area to hold in your abdominal contents. So with gravity, when they set up or stand, it will go down and forward, and that pulls your spine offline too. So in order to support the spine internally, we want to hold the abdominal contents in, and that just enhances posture. And I think the, uh, one of the big features of this device is, are the shoulder straps. They're actually sewn to the back of the device. They come under the arm and lift, and they're very padded so they won't cause any issues, and they actually are good because they help loosen up the shoulders a bit. And tight shoulders uh, are very common with these type of patients. But as you can see here, they crisscross the straps in the back, they're very flexible to where uh, the design to where everybody's shoulders are different. They can be rounded, they can be square, they can be broad, they can be narrow. Um, so you're able to bring them straight down to crisscross them, whatever you need in the back. Then because she had the torticollis or right leaning neck from her stroke, the safe serve right was fit to her. And there are arced holes in the back of the, the vertical slat is what goes up and down that slides into the back of the TLSO, the body device. Then you can angle the headpiece at whatever degree you need to, to be very comfortable and just begin to provide that prolo, prolonged low load passive stretch over a period of time, but it's flexible to allow the patient to work through their tone to reach relaxation. Um, you gradually bring it up. Now when you get here, you want to consider, do I need to go ahead and overstretch them for periods of the day to the opposite side? And the theory behind this is, if you have elongated tissue here and shortened here, and you just stop at midline, you may be able to hold them there, but they will tend to go back to the shortened side. So. You want to be careful and not kick in an episode of tone to go past that stretch reflex. But if you can go to the opposite side, just gradually, you allow these muscles to shorten back and these to elongate to where they should rebound back here. And it's like uh, when the orthodontist puts braces on your teeth. How long uh, do you want straight teeth? Well. These patients may at some point in time, even though you can discharge them from the headpiece, they probably still need the TLSO on a daily basis, but you can discharge the headpiece, but don't throw it away. Hang on to it because at some point in time, they may have a mini stroke. They may get the flu. They may just uh, be upset about something and their heads start to go toward the uh, 
historically affected side. So you may need to do some maintenance on it. Uh, but you can see, if you look at the, the difference, the distance between her ear and her shoulder in the first slide and her ear and the shoulder in the third slide, uh, you can see a dramatic result. And again, that is within 30 minutes. This is just a slide that shows two of my beautiful granddaughters uh, modeling uh, the Kentucky Collar to illustrate that we do these on children too. Next, we're going to address the core.